Well, Amisha, I want to follow up on some of the work that you've been doing, which is fascinating. You have been working with uh, soldiers in the U.S. military who are being deployed to go off to war zones, and you're, you're with a project uh, teaching them mindfulness techniques, right? Right, so the project is, is uh, and it has lots of people on the team, but I, I don't actually teach the mindfulness. In fact, the person teaching the mindfulness is actually kind of an exceptional person in and of herself. She's a former uh, army captain who also is an ordained Buddhist teacher uh, who sat several retreats. And so she's got this, and she's a daughter of the American Revolution and a professor of security studies at Georgetown. <laughs> she's really got every hat on, and she was sort of the perfect partner for this project to develop the kind of mindfulness training that would be appropriate for people that are in the military. She understood that side of it. She understood the, the mindfulness training side. So the project, from my side, it was an interest in seeing how is it that stress um, on the horizon, something that you know is coming that's very stressful, how does that degrade our ability to pay attention? And how might we protect against that by offering mindfulness training? And um, yeah, we trained, she trained 240 soldiers. Then they were deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, they just, they came back this summer and we've tracked them on their uh, functioning after they've come back. Uh, so we looked at them before and after they got training, which is both were before uh, they were deployed. And then they came back from deployment and we tested them again. And um, pretty soon I'll be able to say what we found. <laughs> very soon, very soon. But I'll say that um, Talk about we're happy. Study. Yeah. <laughs> and in one project that we already did, um, which was with pre-deployment Marines, uh, the results were quite uh, interesting. It was a much smaller sample. But I'll tell you what we found with, with that project, because we were talking about the Olympians of meditation. We were talking about 40,000 hours. Well. In the project we did with pre-deployment Marines, what we found was that getting this training that, that Liz Stanley, the, the exceptional teacher that we had as a collaborator, uh, offered, um, and doing as little as 12 minutes of practice a day actually helped these Marines keep their attention and working memory, this kind of added uh, ability to pay attention over time, stable. If they, didn't, if they practiced less than that or didn't practice at all or weren't offered the training, they all degraded in their functioning. So... And th this is an important point, actually, because I got into a big fight with uh, Liz Stanley at some point because uh, I was concerned that the meditation practice be misappropriated and used to actually create better killers. You know, the usual thing is like, okay, would a mindful sniper be a better sniper? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And... and, and, and what she, and she convinced me that actually um, it probably saves lives rather than makes people into better killers because this working memory capacity, which doesn't degrade in the Marines, uh, that's exactly what you want when you're in a counterinsurgency situation. Nobody's wearing uniforms and saying, hi, we're the enemy, we're over here, but these women and children over there, they are innocent and so forth. So you've got a very, very rapidly changing, completely terrifying situation. And if you have experienced some kind of mental training that can keep you grounded, that may make the difference between you know, just killing a whole bunch of innocent people and holding your fire uh, appropriately. And so they're morally speaking, and I think it's important to bring this up, and ethically speaking, uh, it's, it's important to understand that these are uh, complex issues, but that the argument can be made that it's certainly not that all of a sudden we've gone over to the dark side and we're trying to, you know, train people to be uh, better killers, but more to uh, function effectively to do uh, what needs to be done to save lives rather than to take lives. Yeah, I think that's an important point, that our ability to hold our own ethical code uh, really relies on our, our working memory. If you cannot hold information in your mind in the moment that guides how you are to behave, you will just go back to, you know, will go in a reactive mode that could really be uh, very problematic. And, you know, this, the data showed this sort of pattern, increased working memory, uh, better attention. But what was really interesting was having uh, the Marines themselves describe how things were different. Uh, for them, having most of these Marines had gone three or four times before. And one of the medics that was trained actually said it so beautifully. He said, the last time I was there, everything was a blur. Everybody was a target. But this time I could see 
that was a boy, that could be my son. And he really shifted in the way he was thinking and able to see, he was more discerning. And so that kind of a, um, that, pi that kind of pilot project really led us to think, let's give this a bigger shot with the larger uh, population. The other one quick thing I'll say about the Marine study, which is very interesting, is that you know half the guys, we talked about people accepting or not accepting these practices, about half the Marines um, that we trained were really not into it. They were resistors not going to do it. You know, Liz tried her best, but they were just not interested in doing it. And they didn't practice. And we saw that just like the group that didn't get the training, they degraded in their working memory. But then when they came back, we tested them all again. And what I noticed is about half of that group that was the resistors actually got better after they came back from Iraq than before they left. And I was really scratching my head like, what happened? Did being deployed give them a sense of purpose and, you know, they were more aware or what, you know, they had some reason to really, I don't know, I was coming up with all kinds of hand wavy stories. And uh, before I, you know, went on to say any of this, I actually asked Liz, I said, you know, is there anything that stands out about these guys? You know, this group of people that look weird, they look better than before. And she said, oh yeah, they've been emailing and calling me from Iraq. <laughs> they were calling her because their buddies, you know, weren't getting the shakes were able to function, were sleeping at night, and they wanted to know what that stuff was that she taught them beforehand. <laughs> so they actually started practicing while they were deployed, um, which to me is always like a motivation that I, you know, I should try to practice. <laughs> <laughs>